So welcome to Progress for Photographers, uh, in which I talk about what process looks like for photography students who are submitting their work to the AP Art and Design test. If you would like a direct link to this presentation um, and to the slides, just hold up your phone to this QR code and this whole presentation should open for you. If you'd like to make a copy of it, um, to be able to show maybe some of the examples to your own students, that's fine. Just in Google Slides, you can go to File and make a copy. So the agenda for this talk, uh, just very quickly about me and my program, and then talking about what does artistic process look like for photographers? Um, what does the synthesis of materials and process and idea look like for photographers? I have some introductory lessons for Photo One students, and then also um, some lessons for upper level students and getting them ready for the AP test. Uh, first of all, my name is Caroline App, and I teach at Manchester Essex Regional High School, which is in Manchester by the sea. And uh, uh, they even filmed some of it at my high school. I have a BFA in photography from University of Iowa. Um, I have a MFA in photography from Pratt Institute, and I have an MAT in art and design education from RISD. So the main basis of most of my art education was in photography. So first of all, talking about the artistic process for photographers. So during my BFA and my MFA, I basically was never asked uh, to create a sketchbook for my photography classes. I mean, honestly, most of the time the professor would talk about something, we would bring in our work, we'd put it up and our classes were critique, both in my BFA and my MFA program. And photography is always seen as kind of like the art that you make in your brain. You know, it's all the decisions that you make. And in our program, we call them the active choices that you make before you press that button. And I really only started using a sketchbook. Um, and at RISD, we had a design education course and we actually had to keep a sketchbook and turn it in. Um, and so now I keep sketchbooks all the time and they're great. They essentially work like an external hard drive where I can put down ideas, um, things that would maybe disappear over time in my brain, but they are forever on that external hard drive of my sketchbook. And it's a, a great thing to have both for planning um, and ideation and everything. But I noticed that my photography students are very, very resistant to that. So when they made the changes to the AP test, I and my photography students had to start thinking about, well, what does the artistic process look like for photographers? I mean, it seemed very easy for like a painter, for example, they can try out different kinds of brush strokes in their sketchbook. They can sketch different ideas for compositions in their sketchbook. Um, but it wasn't something that we were used to doing. So there's two documents that I'm going to show you right here. And again, if you have done the QR code, you can actually get access to these as well. So the first thing was um, I came up with this along with my students. Uh, but, you know, what does, sorry, is it Lowe's? What does that artistic process, what are all the things that we are doing before we press that button and after we press that button? So there are things, let me make this a little larger. There are things like brainstorming. So when we're coming up with ideas, we do all those things that other art students do, you know, make lists and mind maps and thumbnail sketches and more developed sketches. Um, I have some videos here that I show my students about like coming up with photo ideas and brainstorming and the tools for creative discovery. This is a great, if you're watching this, this teacher has put together a great, great website um, for her AP students. Um, and then, you know, we plan. I think a lot of kids kind of, they don't think about their planning as something that's really a big part, you know, because they might be doing it while they're washing their hair, or, you know, while they're walking to school or if they're bored in some class, they think about, oh, when am I going to take my photos? Where am I going to take? What do I want there to be in my photos? But that is an important part of a process of being a photographer. Choosing your location, 
choosing the type of your location. Even I encourage my students to use Google Maps and Street Views to kind of location scout and see things ahead of time, figure out what time of day, the colors, the clothing, what model they're going to use, how they're going to tell their model to stand or move or the facial expressions, all that body language what kind of lighting they're going to use, the camera controls in terms of, you know, shutter speed and aperture and focal length, all of their angles, that kind of stuff. So there are a lot of decisions that are being made before they press that button. It's just about getting them out of the head and onto paper so that they can show them to the AP creators. And then Researching also, I really encourage my students for their SI ideas to research, you know, news, scientific, even watching movies. I had a student come up with an idea because she was watching Clueless. Um, so all kinds of things are included in researching and that's the kind of stuff they're doing as well. Again, I want them to get it on paper, practicing, they're practicing their camera skills. They're practicing the editing skills. They're practicing techniques they already have learned in class. In my school, they take photo one and then they take photo two and then they can get into AP photo. Um, both of those are one semester classes and then AP is a whole year. So they have learned a lot of things, but maybe they want to perfect them. Um, any additional material skills, anything else that they're using within their photos or doing to their photos, such as collage. Um, and then of course, practicing their 2D design skills. And they are experimenting. They're experimenting while they shoot in terms of angles and distance and orientation, their use of space, their focal length, all those kind of things. They're experimenting while they edit. They experiment with collage and, you know, both digital and in real life. They're experimenting maybe with cyanotype and thread. And we, uh, one of my students, we printed his work out on a kind of fabric and then he's been sewing on it. Um, and then also creating, that's part of the, the process that is actually making the images. So both cho choosing and curating um, and all the other things that are involved. Maybe they're making a book out of it or a zine or altering them. And of course, reflecting and revising, which is also part of the AP test, um, is something they're doing after they press that button. But talking to other people, getting feedback coming up with sketches for new ideas. Um, they can revise their idea. They revise their images by reshooting. They revise their editing. They revise their plan of how to go forward. So there's a lot of revision that's involved in taking photos. And then we talk in terms of that synthesis of materials and process and idea, we talk about what you photo and how you photograph it helps get across the idea of your photo. So, you know, um, the kinds of things I'll go into this more later, but the kinds of things that you photograph and then how you photograph them help get across your idea. So that document is in here. And so you guys are welcome to click on it. Um, as is this document. Which is kind of a cheat sheet for that not cheat, but we all came up with it kind of together in my class um, to help with those hundred character talking about process. So, you know, muted edit shows something or other, you know, muted edit shows a depressive mood or um, shallow focus isolates woman to show blah, 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 you know. So all of these things and this helps them understand what choices they're making and the process they're going through and why they're going through it. So all of those things are there. And then uh, we also have some good um, words here uh, for, for kind of active, active ways of thinking. Okay. So to go a little bit more into the materials and process equals idea for photographers. So material, the, your materials are anything that appear in your photo. The location is a material. You chose it. The objects, the people, the props, the activities, even the lighting that you choose 
are materials that you're working with when you take photos, the colors that you choose to have in there, the fact that you have your friend wear a red sweatshirt versus a white sweatshirt can mean very different things in the image. And of course, body language and emotion. And then the process are all the ways that you shoot or edit your photo. So the choices you make in terms of shutter speed and aperture, 2D design, composition, sun flare, lighting, and then all the editing things that you may do are the way you go about taking and editing the photo and that helps get your idea across. So here's an example of one of my students. She got a five last year um, and she talks about, yes, she has Photoshop and a camera, but she also said first aid kit and coins. And there was a reason for it. It helped back up the idea about the political and economic drain of COVID. Um, and she layered them to show the different parts of the CDC pol and politics and Medicare and everything all working together. Here are some other ones just due to time. I'm not going to go over it, but if you want to pause and take a look, that's fine. And this student also got a five. So I start by making structured process pages with my photo one students. Um, I am going to try to go very quickly over the examples. Again, I want them in here in case you want to look at them more uh, in depth later, but I'm just going to try to get through all the main ideas first. So I was actually at an NAEA conference I don't know if it was in Chicago or in Boston, but I remember going to an AP presentation and the presenter said, if you want a strong AP program, you need a strong middle school art program. And I just thought that that was brilliant. And while I don't have a lot of input over our middle school program in my own district, plus there's been COVID, I don't need to put another thing on their plate at this point. What I can control is what my photo one and photo two students do. So what I start with in my photo one students is very highly structured lessons. And um, it, it's a little abstract for them to think about uh, uh, kind of putting a photograph together, but we do a toy photography unit and I show them a documentary about Lego. It's on Netflix. It's great. Um, that talks about toy design. And so I actually have them come up with a toy design because coming up and, and documenting the process of designing a toy seems a lot more understandable and concrete to them. And then we move on to, you know, brainstorming and coming up with ideas for photos. So um, I give them this very highly structured thing in Google Classroom. They have to have a mind map. We go through what that is, a mood board, you know, just images from the internet, sketches, and then describe how to play. So here's just some quick examples of what like they would actually turn in, you know, and so they just have to fill in the boxes. It's very structured. It guides them through it. Then, because they've been kind of primed with that, we move on to uh, their first process page. At the end of the semester, I've given them assignments, but at the end of the semester, they come up with their own project for themselves, each one of them. So I, it's almost like a, a one assignment SI for my photo one students. So they have to come up with a mind map or list or sketches or some way to come up with ideas and then do some research find some articles or watch some videos or find some kind of media and they have to research it and then include what they learned. And then also a mood board of inspiration um, images. Usually they just find them on the internet. So again, quickly, here are some examples of what that looks like when they turn them in. And again, we're just training them to get used to doing that kind of thing. Again, I know these are quick when I show you the examples, but feel free to pause or feel free to go in and, and look at the slides. So then we talk about planning the photo shoot. Okay, now you have an idea. What are you actually going to plan and do? So I have them look at the location, look at timing, look at weather. We're a coastal community. So I have them look at the tide charts. They include screenshots and images. Um, they come up with six thumbnail sketches. They talk about what they're going to do with their shutter speed and aperture, any kind of lighting and props. And then they do like to find inspiration videos. And it seems to be 
uh, sorry, inspiration photos, and it seems to be very helpful for them. So uh, here's an example, you know, location scouting, actually going on Google Maps and go using Google Street View and checking out different locations or circling on a map where they could go. Having those sketches there, talking about, you know, what the weather is going to be like so they know which day to go out. Again, some more examples. Then the next thing to kind of get them ready is um, for the kind of work they'll do in photo two and in AP is guided ex editing experiments. So again, it's photo one, so it's very structured and they put in their original photo up here and then I tell them exactly what I want them to do. So in the first experiment, just, you know, just colors and exposures, whether they're using Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, the next thing would be try new and different things, you know, go hunt around in Photoshop and find tools you've never used before and try them out. This one, they have to kind of slice and copy and paste and flip and rotate um, and whatever the else they want uh, and kind of explain what they did. And then in the last one, just go crazy and wild and Photoshop it in some way that, you know, you've never Photoshopped, just, you know, where you can barely even tell it's the original picture. So here we can see some examples of those kind of things. And it's a lot of kind of hand holding, but it does, again, get them ready for photo two and AP. And I am hoping that in a couple of years, this really pays off as is this year. I had some students who did these kind of lessons last year, and it really has made a difference in how comfortable they've been in AP making process pages. So those are the things I do with photo one. And then in photo two, um, and then you can also do this in AP, but it's even more free form. Um, but I make semi-structured process pages with photo too. And there's kind of eight different things. Uh, and th these slides are from, or these images are from the videos um, that AP put out. So, you know, we talk about the difference between progress versus process. And these are the eight process page assignments. The first one's just an idea generation planning a photo shoot, practicing skills, shooting experimentation, editing experimentation, materials and process equals idea, you know, that synthesis, feedback and revision, the whole journey. And there's actually kind of a ninth one, which is a tree diagram. So again, in idea generation, those things like lists and mind maps and doing Google image searches, comparing different arts, mood and trend boards, all those things that can help them generate ideas. I show them, these are some more freeform ones that were from kind of the first year that my students did uh, AP before I came up with these lessons, but I show them to them so they can see, oh yeah, photographers do put things on paper, they can, they can take the ideas out of their heads. So the first assignment is brainstorming and they have to make a Google slide that shows all of their process. And this is, you know, the more kind of loose thing that I give a photo to student versus those very structured for photo one. So I just say that they need to have handwritten and drawn notes or mind maps or whatever they are and then all the other things, the research, the colors. And I, I got a lot of good, you know, kind of work where they have their handwritten stuff, but then they also have found things online and it helps them come up with their ideas. You know, thinking about the colors they want to use, thinking about what they could photograph, you know, for the idea of surfing, where they could go, that kind of stuff what part of surfing do they want to show in their images and then that leads to planning the photo shoot so again this is kind of echoing what we did in photo one so planning thinking about where are you going to be what is the time what is your model going to be doing what are you going to do in terms of your camera controls again i have a few more of those free form ones but it's good for the students to see that photographers can get their ideas down on paper and then um and then i have the the kind of semi-structured where you know on this side i want your drawn sketches but on this side put all these other things and here are some examples
I just tell them that, you know, the AP readers don't know them and don't know what's going on in their head. And so we, in a very kind of clear way, need to get that down on paper so the AP readers can understand all the work that they that my students did do in their heads and in real life to try and plan um, for their photos. And then practicing skills. And there's a lot of different kinds of skills. My students are practicing their camera skills, you know, their metering, their shutter speed, their aperture, their focusing, all that kind of stuff. They're practicing their editing and Photoshop skills. They're practicing any other materials, like how to work with cyanotype, how to age things in, you know, trays of Coca-Cola or tea or things like that. Uh, practicing their 2D design skills. So I have them go and um, take a look. These are the more freeform ones first that my students did. Uh, maybe find a skill and then practice it. So here, assignment three that I give my photo to students, um, practicing, you know, whatever these skills are. I want them to put what tutorial or sources you use to gain the skills because I want them to be independent researchers. Um, and then they need to write down what they learned from it and then try it out and put their result. So I give them this, you know, an area to put their research and notes, an area to put their sketches, an area to put their screenshots and comments and the final product. I mean, they can put it anywhere they like, but here, you know, the student watched this and took some notes and then tried it out themselves. Or here, they took some notes. This is the tutorial that they watched and then they tried it out themselves in different ways. Practicing skills, the student was using a drone, so learned some more uh, drone skills and then tried them out and documented it. Playing more with Lightroom. Uh, the student looked at working with models and then these are her photos. So trying out some of the um, poses that she learned about. The student wanted to learn how to make these flowers in the background more this color. So she did research and figured it out. And here was her result. Then experiments and shooting. I actually sometimes don't give this uh, as an assignment, but I have it here in case anybody does. But, you know, experiment with your angles and your distance and your orientation and depth of field and rule of thirds and, you know, just kind of compositional things. So. I have had some students do it, but um, generally I encourage them to do that all the time when they're shooting. So, uh, but I included it in here that you could have an assignment of experiments and shooting and what they would put in. And then again, experimenting in editing. This is a lot like the photo one one, um, but I don't give them as much guidance. So these are some, this student actually is one that she submitted and she got a five on that project. Uh, this is one that a student made that uh, she received a four last year. This student received a four, but it shows the different things that she was trying out when she was editing. The student received a five, and this is the actual thing that she uh, submitted. The student got a five, same student. This is what she submitted. The student got a five showing the process of staining versus Photoshop and trying out this kind of experimentation. So that's more with materials than with ways of shooting or editing. So again, I would give this assignment and give them this loose slide that then they go and put their own stuff on it. And here are some examples real quick. This person experimented with different kinds of editing. Um, same here. You know, a little liquify there. Trying out different techniques to change the mood of the image. So bringing in that synthesis. Experiments in editing. And then having them work with the materials and process um, and synthesis with the idea. So again, talking to them about what you shoot and how you shoot it and edit it helps get across the idea. So maybe the what includes that red sweatshirt and why do they include it? Because red um, references anger and maybe their work, the idea behind it has to do with anger. 
So having them include for their materials, it's not just a camera, it's not just Photoshop or Lightroom, it is all the things that you've chosen to include in that frame. So like this student looked at the tides and then took pictures at different points with the tide and then overlaid them all. Uh, this student, it just kind of some background process of what she did when she took her photos. Uh, and that's a little bit more free form. But again, from the assignment for my photo two students, these are the things I'm asking them to do. And I give them a slide like this and then uh, they create things like this. So the idea is recreating memories and they show the process. They want it to be simplistic, nostalgic materials, nostalgic colors and the process, shooting it from different angles and stuff to try and get across that idea of recreating memories. Same with the idea of youthful joy. So having the color scheme, that materials, it, because the location and, and the colors are also part of those materials. The process is that frozen motion to capture that joyful moment of time, that decisive moment. And uh, this one is about Instagram. So even choosing like what ratio is a part of that process to try and get that idea across. So here are some more examples to just show that they're making deliberate choices of what to include in order to get an idea across. Then we have feedback and revision as the seventh lesson. So this student got a four. It was actually like two years ago during the shutdown. Um, but, you know, she shot these and they were way too dark. So she went back and reshot them. I think that's way too much writing. But, you know, anyway, and this student, how they revised it, this student got a four. Um, and so the lesson uh, for the photo two students, again, to prepare them um, is saying you can re revise your idea. You can revise what you shoot. You can revise how you edit. And again, you can even revise your plan for the future. So I give them this overall slide. Again, they just take these things out, but it kind of re reminds them, oh, what should I be putting on this slide? I should be putting feedback from others. I should be, I should include the image that people were commenting on. I should be saying how I'm going to revise things. I should have sketches of how I'm going to revise things. Maybe you even have the revision, the final on there. So again, feel free to pause and look at these, any of these. But, you know, getting the feedback, things they want to change, examples. I really like this one because these were the original pictures. And then she went back in after she got some feedback and created this, which I think is so much stronger. But again, it's a way to show all these decisions that they're making in their head on paper so that the AP readers can understand them. And then the whole journey. So these are actually, I don't have examples of photo two ones, but these are what some AP students have done. So this student got a five. She kind of showed her whole process, how she takes pictures of, you know, stomach tissue and then, um, or intestinal tissue, and then how she combined it together with her images. Or this student who, um, you know, got inspiration from Clueless, but then did some work about female friendship you know, kind of just the whole process. So not any of those little parts, but how they kind of all work together. The student was doing the new New England. So taking things that were old and making them kind of new again. Um, so she was looking back at tiles um, and then making them um, kind of in a modern way with her photographs. She showed that process. So this has her kind of her inspiration and her planning and her editing and her revision and her experimentation all together. The student got a four. Um, so again, just asking the students, hey, just give us kind of an overall view of the journey that you went on. And so this would be the slide that I'd give them. And then the last thing, and I did this last year and I think it really worked. It helped one kid 
I think it maybe is part of the reason that she got a five. She included hers. I'm asking all my students, I gave it as an assignment again this year, like just strongly urging them maybe include it, but it's actually a tree diagram. So we've seen in a lot of the videos where they talk about the difference between a concentration being a wheel and an SI being, you know, a tree with branches with um, coming off of the trunk and to actually show that in a diagram. So she started with night photography, but then she looked at artificial light sources, setting them up, recreating lights in Photoshop. So one thing led to this, led to this. And her basic idea also made her look at fire as a light source and warm and cool colors. Um, and it led her this way and led her from this to this and this to this. So I think it also helps them understand where their journey has gone throughout the year. Um, so I just had students do this recently. Uh, so a lot of them kind of have unfinished diagrams, but they got started and they'll be adding more to them over the next six weeks. So kind of where you started, what it led you to. Again, to help show that experimentation, practice and revision to the College Board readers. Right. So she's looking at female friendships. She took portrait like photos. She did posed photos. She recreated movie friendships like from Clueless. It also led her to Candid's and capturing real movement, um, real moments. So this is like the assignment that I put in Google Classroom. And that's kind of what I have the students do. So again, just to, to summarize, I have them uh, in photo one, start with something concrete like toy design. And then I have them do three very, very structured, like fill in the box um, for photo one for planning their own photo assignment. And then in photo two, I have suggestions of what to include on the slide, but it's a very much more kind of free form. Um, and again, the students that did that in photo two that I now have in AP are much, much stronger. And I'm kind of having to do some remedial work for the students that did not have me last year in photo two, but had me photo two, you know, a couple years ago. Um, so again, here's the link to the presentation. Uh, if anybody would like to contact me, please do. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, my email is epsi at meaps.org. And I hope that this was helpful.